Okay. So uh, this presentation, I've been presenting it for quite a while for a few lectures, but recently this one got presented. Uh, I, I presented it last first week of May in UST and in summer. So the one in summer lasted like three hours, but now we won't last three hours. But in UST it lasted just 25 minutes, but the same slide. So Armalite last time is a uh, UST. So this was WTA back in 2017 in Ayala Triangle. So I think it's just 20% of the people are still here. Uh, then of course, everyone knows our cats. And then usually the audience goes, ooh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, but of course, everyone knows them. Uh, then of course, I want to talk about the community, not just the community of uh, the Filipino community, but also the community of WTA. So this one is uh, Bayanihan method, where you bring uh, a house to another place. And then this one is a modern example of the Bayanihan. This is back in uh, pandemic, pan pandemic times, Maginhawa Community Pantry, if you guys are fam familiar with it. Uh, then what I want to focus on today is to uh, share my experience and my team's ex experience throughout uh, different projects, di different typologies, while developing what social architecture is. So we, we all know that so social architecture has three key components. First is engage. We want to engage in a way that we bring the architecture to the people, not the people going to, archite going to the architecture itself. Uh, second is barrier free. What we want is to have a structure where everyone is welcome without any restrictions and to localize, to localize, to create uh, this uh, small type of buildings uh, so that you can have a lot of uh, spread uh, impact or influence to, to a city. So this is a story about evolution, evolution of social architecture. When it, uh, it started back in 2016 with the Bookstop project. It's a research pro bono project, started a pro bono project. Uh, then a research what could happen if we do this uh, type of project where we bring in the architecture to the people, to where they actually are, not the other way around where we have a site, then we build, we build up. So first, social architecture through knowledge, that's the bookstop. We have two. So now, yeah, basically I'm presenting memes, uh, but uh, Bill Gates, for example, we, we all know him. Uh, he loves reading books, and then we have Elon Musk. He didn't study rocket science, but now he has SpaceX in his hand. Then, of course, uh, Doctor Strange, if you guys know him, if you, you haven't seen the movie, spoiler alert, uh, go watch it. Uh, basically, Doctor Strange started late when he was studying his superpowers, his journey to becoming Doctor Strange. So what he did was, uh, when his physical body was resting or recovering, his spiritual mind or body are, is reading books. So basically that's how he ended up catching up all, with all of the masters at his uh, journey. Then of course, if you're a guy, then you don't have good looks. What you can do is give a whole fucking library to, to Belle and you win his, uh, her heart. Then that's how the bookstop started. Then uh, the program of bookstop is every three weeks, we move it in another place, in another city, or in another, another community. So then we hold uh, special events for the community to engage. So we have storytelling, lectures and seminars, uh, storytelling in, in Ayala, dialogues. This, is, this dialogue certainly is uh, specifically uh, was about mental health, mental health that time. Then open mic where you get to share your, uh, like a song you wrote, a poem you wrote, uh, everything. It's just an open mic and a stage and then uh, all of the people are, are there to listen. Heritage Walk and Talk where uh, they gave a lecture and then have the tour in Intramuros. Watercolor Workshop uh, by Bayan Alibata. Human Library. Then Quiz Night, Star Wars. This is DJ uh, in, in uh, the Stormtrooper. If you guys know DJ, he's fond of uh, props and costumes. Then we have Blind Date with a Book where we 
cover all of the books and then write something, just a clue of what kind of book it is. Uh, then the first book stop, this one is already, it's uh, have its permanent house, permanent place in front of in front of Manila Cathedral in, in Plaza Roma in, in Tramuros. So of course, if we're doing a research project, we need to have data. So this is the data we gathered in every uh, in every location we have. We we find the nearest library where the bookstop is, and then we get their exchange rate when it comes to uh, borrowing borrowing books. So the one in Plaza Roma, the nearest we have is Intramuros Administration Library. Uh, so every day their average uh, borrowing of of books is one to two per day. But this is the books up that average around uh, 100, uh, 70, 75. This is the books up in Ayala Triangle, the first one. Then uh, Ayala Triangle uh, data is, it shows that average is around 30, 30, 30, 30 35, but the books up is around 100, 115. Then this is in San Sebastian Church, Molito. Kaizen Memorial, uh, Yala Triangle. Uh, this was the opening of Dia de, Libro. Dia, Dia de Libro. Every end of April, they celebrate uh, World Book Day. So that's where we launched Bookstop back in 2016 and 2017. 2017, uh, it wasn't just the Bookstop that we launched. It also We also launched uh, as El Museo del, del Prado. So after this, it's just the equivalent of the Bookstop, but a museum. Then Plaza Roma. Uh, BGC, Intramuros, Fort Santiago, Intramuros. So uh, we know that we're doing something right because the community responds. There, there's a positive uh, response from the community. And uh, what happens when, you know, you see these kids, in, 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 especially in Intramuros, uh, this, this night when we're going to move the bookstop from Intramuros to... I think BGC that time. And then uh, while we're moving it, it I, I think we, it's around 12, 12 midnight. Uh, a small kid, girl, uh, a kid uh, approached us, the team approached us. I, I was with Burley that time. Uh, she asked, why are we moving the bookstop? Where are we transferring the bookstop? Uh, that time it was in BGC. And then we told her, na, we're coming back after three weeks and it's going to be permanent. And it's going to be permanent in Tramuros. Uh, then her, her face lit up, uh, knowing that uh, the place she loved and the place where they hang out with, with her friends have a permanent place in, in Intramuros. And that night, we realized that we have a mission to accomplish. We have uh, the book stuff is just the start of, of what we're doing. And now, social architecture through social, uh, culture and arts. So this is the uh, El Museo del Prado. Uh, what happens here is uh, the Spanish embassy, together with Instituto Cervantes, approached us when they saw the bookstop back in 2016. And then 2017, they wanted also uh, a, a, they wanted the muse uh, museum in Prado, the exhibits there, to uh, be exhibited here in the Philippines. So what they did is to send uh, replicas of selected works in Prado uh, and to be exhibited here in the Philippines, but not in a contained space, but in an open park. So the same concept as the books up. So these are some of the paintings uh, they sent. Then uh, this project was made by other architects in, in Europe. So they already started doing it. Uh, but what we wanted to do is, for us, not just, since they're, also, they're already bringing the, the art, the painting, here in the Philippines, what we wanted is to also bring the architecture. Because the, a museum, how the museum works is, is you create it in a way, create it in a way that uh, every, Every space in a museum is uh, well created in a way by artists or by era, by time, by style. So instead of just bringing the paintings here in, 
in the Philippines, we want to bring the architecture of Prado in the Philippines. So this is the main uh, facade, then this is the interior, and then uh, the, the paintings are also created by how it's grouped or how it's going to be presented. So the three main principles we or fundament, fundamentals we work on are the shelter viewing point and the main art. And uh, this is the design uh, or how we came up with. So first, defining the space, uh, creating this, uh, creating this spaces to house uh, your art or your exhibit. Then place making, then your facade adaptation from your main facade, uh, spatial interpretation, and for making. So this is what we came up with, and uh, I think it's way better than just by having a stand and uh, having your painting mounted on the stand. And this create like, or copies at least the experience of what you're gonna have in, in Prado itself. So we arrange it in a way, of course, of how we, uh, it was curated together with the museum curators on how we arrange the paintings. So this is a hallway uh, layout. Then we have a courtyard uh, oculus circular layout. And this is your, for, from the original one to the present, uh, for like a tropical social architecture version of it. So this is how we mix it together. The next typology I want to share is the connection. So connection we create uh, with social architecture. Well, social, just being social, not just about architecture, but this one is a festival. I think we all know Anthology Festival. If you're not familiar with Anthology, let me know, we'll give you a lecture about it. Uh, but I hope we bring back Anthology by next year. Uh, I think it's really an uplift to the architectural, Filipino architectural community. So this is the community we have. This is the team, the core team we had uh, 2021. It was a virtual anthology, the last one we had. Uh, then I think few people are here. Then of course, you, the community you create with anthology, the, the connections uh, were basically uh, removing the hierarchy between the audience, the suppliers, the contractors, the developers, and even the speakers. So oh, we all, figuratively, we're all in the same ground, which is Fort Santiago, and then there's no a hierarchy where you can't talk to the suppliers or even talk to uh, the speakers. We encourage everyone to, to talk with, with everyone. So we have social uh, shelter dialogues where uh, a panelist and uh, five panelists of, or a couple of panelists with a moderator talks about certain topics, then uh, lectures, workshops as well. Then we have exhibit speakers gallery uh, this was recently introduced, uh, the pavilions of different practices, practices in, in the Philippines. Uh, the common ground where suppliers and uh, developers are uh, exhibited in, in the middle. Then you have competition. Uh, it's a really fun competition because it's mixed with local and international universities. So yeah, that event was a bit tight because it was Feb 2020 and then by March 2020, we were in a lockdown. And uh, before that, we, we were having an eruption in Taal. So uh, thankfully everything go went through, but we all know what happened in March 2020. So with this uh, Boys and Pavilion, Anthology Festival Boys and Pavilion, uh, became an inspiration for the next six months in, in our office. Uh, this was an uh, anthology festi uh, festival pavilion made by a uh, team of uh, Justin's. Justin, uh, how many days uh, construction it all? Yeah, so it's, it's almost the same as uh, what we needed. It's basically what we needed to have a response for the pandemic that time. So back in March 2020, we were getting this news, actually er earlier 2019, late 2019, we were getting this uh, uh, news that pandemic has already started. And then in the Philippines, uh, we already tried to look for solutions, but 
are this the best things we can do? Uh, are this the best things that architects can, could do? So this become an inspiration for what we're gonna ha what we're gonna do in the next six months. So in March, we had a meeting on the things uh, or reflection between the medical team, the architecture department, and even uh, the volunteers on what's happening in the Philippines, what we can do. So we come up, we they come, we came up with uh, EQF. Uh, emergency quarantine facilities. So, uh, EQF basically didn't have a standard design. If you're gonna see all of, if you're gonna collect all of the EQF, the first one is very different from the last one because every time we build, we learn. We learn from the contractors, the builders, the medical team, even the patients themselves to how to improve or how we can improve our EQF every time. So we built 75 versions uh, of EQF, basically. Then we outsource this, it's open for everyone to use. And we use the simple materials and even construction method, or just wood, nail, screws, plastics, um, insulators, uh, paleta, so it's very simple so that Everyone can, can do it. And then the, material, the materials are, are available. Uh, this is a time lapse of uh, the whole construction. The first one, the first EQF we did, uh, we did it for three days and then the last remaining two days were just filling in, filling in the beds, uh, the curtains and all of the inside. Um, then uh, this is a timeline of where where we first started back in April 1. So we thought it's just an April Fool's, another April Fool's, but uh, up to May, we did 70 EQFs. Uh, in total, I think we did 85. Uh, 75 recorded, but 85 uh, right after. The advantage of what we're doing compared to the response of China that time was first, for example, in Metro Manila, of course, we don't have enough space. Uh, so the scalability is very important and also the speed. Since you were building small, we're doing it faster. And then compared to China, they have a facility, they have budget, they have uh, space to uh, hold all of the patients. But for us, uh, what works is to localize the AQF basically by the community for the community. So every time we go and build to another city, there are local builders who help us, who volunteers, or even, uh, for example, one scenario was uh, one construction, one building that is under construction uh, it, uh, got hold because of the availability of materials and, and everything. So the laborers are stuck in, in, inside, that, inside the under construction building. So what we did is we got them to work with us and then basically paid them for, for labor. Then these are just an example of uh, the construction period together with Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Navy. So uh, what role do architects play in our communities? I think we have the power to bring everyone together and lead them, by a, lead them to a meaningful goal. Uh, this is the team, uh, the core team we had for architects uh, basically, uh, the single people that time, because we don't, we didn't want uh, volunteers that have that, that stays with with their family because the risk of, of COVID. The medical team, AFP, yeah, Armed Forces of the Philippines. Then uh, the suppliers. We design, we build, we share, we bring people together. The vital function of architects working on site, adapting to the needs of each site, and developing whether tools we had to finish the project in five days. This is an example of uh, the biggest EQF we did. This is in Camp Krame, 200 beds. Normally, it's 16 beds. Uh, so this is a competition between the SMDC people, the people from AFP, uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines, uh, 
then the labors from this building so for example this building uh, it was on hold so the labors here are working on this uh, building on this certain EQF so surprisingly they they were the last one who finished if you can see they started second but the trees are done and then this is the last one uh, basically because they have a place to sleep in and then the AFPs just slept on the stage and the EQF facilities so who won? AFP, of course, discipline one. Uh, the this one. Then this is by MD, MD setting the SNBC this one. And then this is the central. It looks like a Japanese uh, place, but this is the central uh, control area for the four EQFs. So I'm just gonna run down the uh, few of the facilities we did: Makati, Aguinaldo, NCRPO, Naval. Uh, Pasig, Army Hospital, Tondo High School, RITM, Santa Ana, Viluna. So, uh, if you can see, there are different materials we're using. So, sometimes uh, a hospital requests to use like GI sheet or uh, or plastic or anything uh, because they have a further plans uh, after after COVID for for the facility. Medical. This is the map out uh, of all of the EQFs we did. And then these are the EQFs done by other teams in the provinces. In the provinces. Davao, Cabanatuan, Pangasinan. And one in Singapore by our friend from uh, Anthology Festival. This is the total beds we did. So it's just a quick uh, solution just to uh, offset the needs for beds, especially for for the hospital that that are that those who are in need, because we can't mix the normal patients together with the COVID patients. Uh, so this is a simple video, as just to pay an homage for the army or the whole EQF team who built, and it shows how the process on how we built the EQF. Yeah, so first site preparation and then uh, flooring for paleta, floor finish, framing, wall framing, wall divisions, wall panels, roof frame, roof coverage, roofing. This image is basically this one. So this is me together with army. I was bald that time together just for unity with, with the army. Then uh, another example or, or uh, venture or journey we did with social architects is to represent, be a, represent, be a representative for your community. So this project is Katbalogan City Hall. So it's under construction now. Uh, just a quick context of where we at. So, Katbalogan is basically this one, this city. It's a small city that's get, that gets flooded every time it rains. Uh, they're basically a catch basin of rainwater. And we're moving up, we're developing, uh, the city started developing a plan. So the Sky City Complex is this one, and the small part for, uh, they donated it for the city hall. This is a cultural study or research. Uh, it's always a challenge to design something that will represent a city that if, of course, if you're not from there. So we really have to dig in, uh, even, uh, we really have to dig in from uh, all of the resources we, we could find. And luckily we had a teammate that time that uh, still a student. So she's really good at researching and have a couple of resources that we didn't have access with. So. Uh, this is just a fishing equipment, livelihood trade, uh, about their everyday life. Then Antiao River. We're also doing a rehabilitation for Antiao River. And it's also under construction. Then flora and fauna. 
flood map of as you can see every time uh, it rains this is a flood map from this is the main Antiao river then the city hall is here so every time it rains it's, it gets flooded uh, so one or a couple of examples or problems we encounter every time we go to a city hall if we if we're if we're gonna pay tax or apply for permit a uh, few problems are uh, under organized for example uh, parking vehicles and lack of signages or wayfinding uh, block or unclear entrance uh, unplanned extension of buildings so it's just maximizing every space intimidating design a new space at night uh, a city hall is just like an office and for example you have your makati even here in ortigas where seven to maybe six or se uh, six to six six a.m to six a.m the place is alive but after that it's dead so it's basically the same with our city halls uh, then you have chaotic waiting areas and monotonous interiors where you get lost where you when you try to find uh, spaces this is just the considerations we're trying to uh, consider with, with, with designing uh, the, city, the city hall. Basically, we want to have this social, oh no, first, the communal core, where spaces acts as a magnet for the community, where the, we engage the community for them to use the city hall, even though if it's, even if after office hours or during, even during office hours. Social, cultural, to be a representative. Uh, for the city and community connections. So the last part is reforestation. Uh, one, one thing we want to do or share with the community or the local people in Katbalogans uh, uh, is to be an example on how we gonna build up. If to, to be an example on, uh, because uh, for the past how many years, they were just in the low-lying land because it's the easiest way to build. But we want to be an, to set an example as to how we gonna build in on in the in the mountains. So one part is reforestation. We want to bring or we want to let them know the importance of reforestation. Uh, one problem that's why they're getting flooded every time it rains. It's because it's basically a small concrete jungle, uh, their city proper. So there's no place for the water to uh, be absorbed because everything is covered by concrete. So the main design is uh, we wanted to create a, a main spinal uh, core or a flow. So like your spine, like your backbone, and then you get your programs are, are all attached to, to that uh, spine. So imagine having your backbone and your ribs. So if you get lost or if you're trying to find something, you just go back or just uh, travel to that spine uh, and then you'll find your way. So everything is what is connected to that main spine. So these are the communal spaces. Then your second floor, still the spine uh, continues to the second floor. Then the reforestation area. The third floor is quite private. This is the hallway in, uh, for the third floor. Uh, the challenge with us in, in the site was it was from left to right, it was sloping upwards. From front to back, it was sloping downwards. So what we did for uh, the first three floors, it was created on top of uh, the slope that's going from left to right that slopes up. Then we created a couple of ground floors. So it's basically basement one, two, and three, but uh, treated as uh, ground floors. the side elevation, side section. This is the uh, rear view where it's, it's overlooking the city. So we have a roof deck where everyone can uh, access and see the city. The front, uh, the main view from the main street. And last, I want to share responsibility. Uh, responsibility of us architects with uh, the city, with nature, with the people. So this is the project Batangas uh, Batangas Forest City Master Plan. Uh, 
they are gifted of this mountain uh, the connection of a huge connection of nature uh, it started with the mountain and then goes through Kalumpang River and then to the sea so this is Mount Banoy and Batangas is actually uh, quite a bit far to Manila 106 kilometers travel distance so it acts independently not compared like for example in in Cavite where Cavite is highly uh, highly connected with with Manila because it's the sort of residential community sort of of the working force of Manila of Metro Manila this is Kalumpang River then our site the, our main site so Batangas development is here the city center this is our site a 300 hectare site then Mount Banoy, then you have your forest creek, Kalumpang River, and then you have your industrial uh, industrial parks here. So it's a complete loop of everything. So we're actually doing also the tourism master plan. So uh, Batangas Forest City Master Plan is a small stone for the whole tourism master plan, for the whole loop of Batangas. So Batangas Forest Living, taking nature's gift as our uh, breathing ground. Uh, what we did is when we visited the site, we map out the the places that we can build and uh, the nature uh, that's already there. So luckily, there's a creek in the middle, this one. There's an existing creek that's already an overgrown forest. Uh, then we're we're gonna preserve it, the slope and the existing forest. And th and this is an ecological network concept sort of theory when we try to connect everything like the forest nature and the people and how they uh, act together so what we wanted is to create an urban ecosystem or a regenerative city so this is a map out just a map out of a green and water network uh, then this is a f uh, an example of uh, the forest, the forested area where we try. So, how we did it for a master plan, like a social architecture uh, way, is to sort of uh, put a lot of bookstop sort of in in the perimeter of the forest. Uh, in that way, what we did is, or what we were able to do is, to have a transition or a portal from the city pro to city development to the forest. So a few examples are agri uh, agro forest garden, arboretum, art installation. But it's not just placed, uh, they're not placed randomly. But uh, you'll see later, they're attached with the community where they're located. So this is a path, a uh, visualization of a path in the forest. Building communities, a city that grows with its people, communities with, uh, with the forest as its center. So this is uh, when we visited Batangas Forest City. And just a history of Barangay. Then came. So uh, what you want for, for a master plan, especially if it's uh, you, you want commandments, you want rules, you want uh, something to guide you, and especially to, when creating a huge project. Uh, so for example, here, we have uh, the guides between uh, the population, the land use, uh, accessibility, nature, and all. So these are guides on creating or developing the master plan. Uh, from this, we map out different uh, types of communities or uh, what kind of community you want in 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 a space so for example in the yellow one is a gateway uh, where th it's the first community you're gonna arrive so that's where the terminal is you have a shopping sh uh, shopping center there then the second one the blue one is would be the logistics since it's uh, it's the sort of uh, most hidden space in in the master plan. Then you have lifestyle here, uh, a shop, the shopping district, then eco living, where you have villages without cars, just electric and walking and biking. Uh, and then they, they have their own farm. 
then trade for market uh, innovation for IT sports sports and active zone uh, arts neighborhood where you have like a, a smart smart city or smart neighborhood then people center for the government CBD life sciences park for research so this the whole forest park connects with uh, the communities by multiple portals multiple sort of bookstop uh, portals this is a mix of typology where it shows that a, a, a certain community can work on its own but when it's completed it can be a complement complementary with uh, complementary with the neighborhood that it's uh, attached or together with so these are the different communities so for example gateway com uh, gateway community you have your main tram terminal multimodal terminal uh, shopping center a mall so this is gonna be how it's uh, how it's gonna look so that's that's, that's a center uh, terminal eco living village uh, so it's the village of uh, residential village for for those families or uh, communities that wants in this kind of living where uh, it's vehicle free it's just powered or the transportation is just uh, by walking or electric vehicles or even bikes and then they have their own uh, farm inside their building and even uh, throughout the landscape uh, this is sports an active zone trade hub for the market public housing hotel visitor center so almost all of the public uh, amenities so it's this one you have your peria you have your shop houses going through the theater sports and active zone so that's this one then arts and culture district where arts and culture district it's uh the, their portal going to the forest city are like a graffiti wall or amphitheater open amphitheater or park people center the city hall cultural continuity a master plan that is planted by the people's culture and traditions that will live and grow in the community and with the community so when designing a master plan you don't start with zero you don't start from scratch what you have is the existing culture of the people you just have you're just going to be the enabler of or even the the role player that will heighten uh what they have so you're enabling their practices and even their culture to grow so just continuing the filipino culture they have and even the local practices they have like for example simbangabe life on the streets it just continues you have your servetes you have your peria their local fluvial procession then human environment uh, a master plan that deviates from from command and control systems therefore grows with nur and nurture the communities then this shows the uh, mobility of the master plan so we have a main loop where uh, everything is connected and then there's a tram for every 400 meters then uh, the master plan is basically an amusement park so everywhere you go i'll be watching you. <laughs> but no but everywhere you go there's uh, every 100 meters there's something interesting that will uh that will show up or that's going to be there so you don't feel walking a very long distance like for example uh going here to green hills you're going to see a lot of things uh along the way so from the theory before, this is how we connect everything. Uh, it could have been better if uh, we could have visualized every single part of it, but uh, it's too much, it's a lot. Then your typical uh, green lane. Then your Batangas Forest City. And lastly, I just want to finish it off by uh, as architects, we are the voice of the community to, to give them a better place uh, to live in. And that's our role. We're not just designers, but we're enablers of, uh, of the community's hope. And 
uh, for a community, we're, we're always saying about community, we're always discussing about community, what community is. It's, it's not a place, it's not a physical place, but it's where, where you are, where, who are your group mates, for example, for example in, in WT, uh, the community of WT is, uh, is completely different from, right? for example, Plaza, right? Uh, but I, I want to highlight is to, for you guys to find your community, to be involved in certain communities, especially in architecture, because architecture will take a long time. Uh, building, basically building takes, takes a while. And if you're part of this community, if you're part of a certain community, especially uh, where, we are, where we are right now, this same community will help you grow, will help you push, will help you stay where you are, or even uh, push you through all the problems you're having. Uh, the community will, sort of like yung sa, I forgot, uh, in, in the movie, Marvel movie, where Kay, Kay Thor, it's, their city got destroyed. So basically, where the people is, it's it's where the city is. It's where I forget the city. I ask where this. So be part of a community where it helps you develop as as what you are, as what you want to be, and be thankful that they're they're there for you to to support. Uh, and yeah, I just want to uh, thank everyone to being here and being part of this community. And I'm thankful with my with my teammates, with my past teammates, Pauline and Sinaroch. Uh, now we develop this community. We develop further, and then as we do this Wednesday sessions, we we progress to a better architect, to a better enabler of our communities. So thank you for for listening, for being here. Thank you.